Uh, hi everyone, my name is Alan Mond and today I'm just going to go through a uh, quick presentation um, on how to get started on car hacking. And it's actually a great segue to Aditya's presentation because some of the things that he talked about, like uh, radio hacking with Bluetooth, uh, can, will, will come in really handy. Um, and if you have any questions, yeah, definitely interrupt and, and uh, ask your questions. I'll try to keep track of what's going on uh, on the chat. So here are the things that we're going to talk about, how to get started. Uh, so what are some of the areas that you can look into to hack a car? Um, the vehicle networking basics uh, that are required to hack a car. So some, some of the very, very basic things that you need to know about um, the vehicle's internal network. Uh, a very, very short demo showing what that looks like and then how to build your own testing book uh, for very, very cheap. Um, objective of this talk is to create awareness, obviously, and uh, to for a more informed audience. So a little bit of background. I'm originally from Argentina, um, and uh, I worked at Bosch for a number of years on the Pontiac Solstice, uh, doing engine calibration and a lot of uh, work internally uh, on how the vehicle communicates between, between the, the different modules. Um, I then started uh, a small equipment sharing company called MuniRent, uh, then launched in 2016 CarLoop, which is a, a car hacking tool, and you'll see it pop up here. Uh, and now I uh, recently started um, at Voyage, um, doing hardware integration and controls uh, for a self-driving taxi service. So, uh, and below are all sort of my interests. So if anyone is interested in any of that stuff, definitely um, hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter is, is on there as well. Oh yeah, since I have a captive audience right now, I wanna just um, download some information that I had about the Pontiac Solstice that I can't just give this information to anyone. So since you're here, I'll, I'll just tell you. The way to identify whether a Pontiac Solstice, which is this car, is a turbo versus a regular naturally aspirated car is with this. So you can see that, that the grill actually has minor difference. Anyways, that was kind of a... Um, sidestep for the talk. But what are some of the, the different attack surfaces on cars? When, when, you, when you come across a car, um, let's see, something in the chat. Um, when, there's, when, you, when you come across a car, uh, there are some, some things that you might notice as you start hacking with cars. And there's, there's a number of attack surfaces. So the first one that a lot of people um, sort of disregard is the tire pressure monitoring system, sensor. In every car nowadays, you have to have a sensor um, that connects to the car, and it's located in each one of the four tires. And that sensor measures pressure. The way that communicates to uh, the body control module is via a uh, radio signal. So it's a low frequency uh, radio signal that um, sends the data back to the module. So you can actually inter intercept that signal um, and that would be one attack surface. Um, another attack surface is uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. So essentially there's nowadays there's a lot of cars that have um, onboard Wi-Fi, so they have a 3G modem or a 4G uh, modem and a Wi-Fi uh, hotspot in the car. And a lot of uh, times that hotspot is open, completely unsecured. So you can actually, um, if you're driving next to someone um, on the highway, you can actually tailgate them and um, log into that network. 
And that network is actually connected through the uh, main info infotainment system, which is the, the those screens in the center of the car. Um, so the third one is the um, OBD2 port, which is typically underneath the steering wheel. Sometimes it's to the left of the steering wheel, sometimes it's to the right. And this is the main uh, entry point access, but this is already inside the car. And then the fourth one is the infotainment system itself. Um, and USB, there's, there's a, a number of ways you can actually get root access to the infotainment system. Um, and after this talk, I can, I can point you in, in, in the direction of where uh, these um, resources are. So how to get started. The first thing that I would uh, recommend anyone, if you haven't already, is to pick up this book. It's called The Car Hacker's Handbook. It was written by Craig Smith. Um, and it's first published in 2016. There, there aren't a lot of, there's, there isn't a lot of literature out there, surprisingly, um, about car hacking. And this is, I think, one of the most comprehensive ones. It's actually free to download. Um, so if you go to this link, you can download a zip file and a PDF of the entire book. So um, one of the nice things about this book is it really does cover a lot of the nitty gritty of um, hardware hacking. Um, so for example, when you, when you actually get an engine or a, a, a transmission control module or any module in the car, you can actually open it up and it um, goes in, in pretty deep detail on how to um, download for firmware and do a lot of things that Adidia was talking about um, in the last presentation. There's an entire chapter dedicated to socket can and can utils. And since I'll show some of this, it'll be very, very good if you like this to kind of follow up and, and read that chapter because it's, it's very, very good. And it also talks about how to reverse engineer an ECU, which is really interesting. So we'll, in order to get started in car hacking, the easiest way is to have access to the uh, DLC, it's data link connector, but more colloquially known as the OBD2 port. Um, the OBD2 port uh, is called like that because of uh, regulation from the California Air Resources Board um, to have a standard way to read um, diagnostic fault codes that would affect the environment, um, so any fuel related. And then, and then it became this sort of standard for reading fault codes in an engine. The interesting thing is um, since 2008, a lot of these, um, since the 2008, OBD2 was mandated to be on CAN, uh, the CAN protocol. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And this is very important because the rest of the car is also on the same CAN network. So what's, what's exciting about being able to access the OBD2 port is that once you can um, read data from the OBD2 port, you can write data um, very easily and control the car. Uh, it's completely unencrypted. Uh, so you need a, a CAN hardware tool. Um, this comes in many, many shapes. Um, you can find one that uh, goes from the OBD2 port to uh, RS-232 um, connector. Really what you're looking for is a microcontroller that has um, a CAN controller on it um, and a CAN transceiver. And some of these tools are uh, pretty, pretty affordable, um, but it, it does require you to buy another cable um, to go from the OBD2 port to the tool, from the tool to your computer. Um, if you don't have RS-232, it's kind of a pain. So, uh, and you also need a Linux machine. Um, I guess before I, I keep going, I, my uh, background is, is not in security. Um, actually, my background is all in automotive. So definitely um, ask any questions with that in mind and take whatever you can from from this and apply it to to do it any type of um penetration testing on on cars 
Um, you can also, there are other options, like this is why we came up with, with car loop, which is basically a cable-less um, device. So you just connect it straight to the OBD2 port, and you can either use a micro USB or, or Wi-Fi to read, and it supports the same uh, socket can, and, and it's completely open source as well. Um, a lot of times I get asked the question, but what about these $10 OBD2 dongles on Amazon? Why can't I use those to hack my car? Um, actually, you could. Uh, they're just, in, in my case, it just takes a lot of work to um, use the tools because they're, they have an integrated circuit called the ELM327 that actually takes the raw CAN messages and then converts them into physical values or into actual um, values from the end. And so inside this ELM327, there's this um, data dictionary that whenever they, it sees a CAN message, it actually sends out um, an actual signal. So you're not really getting the raw CAN messages and you're just looking at um, the OBD2 mandated messages rather than being able to see the entire um, range of CAN messages that are available. So that's why the OBD2 dongles on Amazon are just not a good tool to uh, write either. So you can only read, you can't really send CAN messages back into the vehicle. Um, from what I've seen, the most comprehensive list of hardware devices, car hacking tools, both software and hardware that are open source um, are on this uh, awesome vehicle security list uh, on this link. And if you go there, you'll and the README is just an amazing uh, plethora of information. And then some friendly forums that I like to hang out at. Uh, OpenGarages.org uh, is great. They always have really, really so, sort of no judgment uh, zone comments. And same with community.carl.io. And recently, there's been a new one called comma Slack. Uh, it's basically comma.ai, which is a self-driving car company that has open sourced a bunch of stuff. But And they also have um, bounties to, um, if you can basically create a port to do a self-driving car. So it's a really interesting, um, in, interesting place to, to ask questions about car hacking in general as well. Um, okay, so in order to to command a vehicle or to, to figure out uh, what are some of the um, easy ways to, to modify a vehicle, um, you need to have some idea of networking basics, the, the vehicle networking basics. Um, every vehicle that's rolling on, at least in the US and a lot of uh, Europe, Asia, and, and South America, uh, there's Internally, there's a network called the CAN bus, and it connects all the modules uh, through these two wires, basically two physical wires that um, connect the dashboard to the engine, to the body control module, the airbag control module, the transmission, the infotainment system. Everything is connected on, on, on a CAN bus. Um, CAN stands for Controller Area Network. It's two wires. It's CAN high and CAN low. There's typically more than one CAN bus on vehicles. For example, on, on Teslas, they have uh, the Tesla Model S has six different CAN buses for different um, parts of the vehicle. So why focus on CAN? Um, it's mandated since 2008. Uh, and so a lot of manufacturers uh, use it. So if you have to work on one protocol, protocol CAN is the the protocol moving forward that's going to be the, the most open. And right now, it's not encrypted at all. So if you connect any device to a car, you'll start seeing data. So this is what it looks like on an oscilloscope. Um, and when you convert this to actual data, this is what you're seeing. So basically, the signals go from high to low. So from 2.5 is the resting voltage. And then whenever there's a... a a packet that's being sent, the information is, is transmitted by um, modulating this signal. 
So I'll explain the, the most important part of a CAN message is the ID and the data. So the ID is basically what that CAN message, what kind of information that CAN message is containing. And the data is um, the payload, basically. This is what it looks like on your laptop when you're running uh, CAN utils, which is one of uh, the utilities for, from Socket CAN. Uh, so I'll give you a very short demo of what that looks like. So the first thing you want to do is you want to install uh, CAN utils. And this is how you do it on Ubuntu. Um, in the case of if you're using car loop, you can provision a car loop with can utils and uh, flash over the air uh, on your car loop. And you can actually go to this um, this address um, because on on this URL, it'll actually go through what it's what are some of the the things you have to do to uh, get this data through socket can. Um, and then you just type in can sniffer dash C can zero. And then you, you, you start seeing a bunch of data and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is uh, just a, a GIF. But if we stop that, this is what uh, the data coming from can looks like. So this is the ID and the rest are, so there's definitely, there's, there's basically eight bytes of data and each byte pair um, contains different types of, of information. This is coming from the ABS module of a Ford Fusion. And so there's, there's only a few messages, but if you do this on an entire car, it'll be you know, 3,000 messages um, just scrolling through. So the way you identify what this is, is you look at the ID and then you see what kind of, um, what changes, for example, if you, if you unlock the doors, which one of these uh, digits or this, which one of these byte pairs are changing. And that's how you can actually de decode what each ID is. Um, there's no documentation out there and manufacturers don't really want you seeing what this is, but it's fairly straightforward once you have this in front of you and you start clicking different buttons on the car, you actually see this changing and the, the colors change as well with this tool. Can sniffer, which is open source and it's native for uh, Linux. So, if you don't feel like hacking on your own car, you can actually build a test bench. And for less than a hundred bucks, you can actually have a running CAN bus with, for example, an engine control module, a power supply, and um, any of the CAN hardware CAN devices that I mentioned above. Um, if you add more modules, you can get more interesting data. This is, for example, uh, uh, a test bench for a Ford Fusion. So there's um, a dashboard, uh, the Sync 3 module, which is really interesting to hack on, um, the controls for AC, uh, the radio, and the you see the fuse box there, which actually has some internal relays. And all that is sending CAN messages. So if you disconnect one, you can actually see what are the CAN messages that are coming from that module. So this is a really, really um, interesting exercise. I'm going to check if there are any uh, questions so far. Um, yeah, Alan, we can, um, we can go a little long here if we need to. Um, OK. Yeah, so no worries. Um, OK, so that, that was it, actually. Um, yeah, no, I know, I, I, but there's some good questions in here. So uh, we had someone just ask if you can, can you get this from your local junkyard, those, uh, those parts that you were just talking about? Yeah, as a matter of fact, car-part.com, which is what I was showing earlier. Uh, let me go back to that. Yeah, so car-part.com is actually even better than your junkyard because it's all of the junkyards um, across the U.S., all um, on this website. So people that have junkyards just post 
cars that they have and it automatically populates the parts that will have on that car. So you actually go there, you order it and it arrives. Typically everyone ships USPS priority and that way you don't have to go do it yourself. Awesome. Uh, let's see, we had someone ask, um, how do you access proprietary PIDs? Yeah, so PIDs, which are parameter IDs for OBD2, um, those are harder to, to decode because those are, use a, a response, a query and response um, structure. Those are specific to OBD2, so they don't just stream the data doesn't just stream. You actually have to send a specific PID to get it back. And the way I've seen most people do that is, is um, by using a scan tool. Um, you, can, you can buy a scan tool um, for that specific brand and use a, a Y splitter. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. Y splitter. I mean, this is, I'm not trying to, this is the easiest way to show what a Y splitter looks like. Um, yeah, so basically you connect on one side uh, a, re a device that reads data, and then on the other side you connect the scan tool, so you can actually send uh, um, a request, like what is the, um, I, I don't know, what's the RPM, and then you'll get it back, uh, and you'll see what is the request sent and how to capture the, the message back as well. Does that make sense? I think so. Um, let's see. Let's see. Can you please explain about the replay attacks on car key fobs using hack RF uh, <laughs> types of devices? Um, yeah, I, I haven't played. I haven't played a lot with that, uh, so I, I really can't comment. But I have no idea. What's the difference between um, kind of the, the tool set that you described in a couple of the first earlier slides and the stuff that's like on Illmatics, the Charlie Miller kind of tools he dropped when he did the Jeep research and the hacking manuals there? Yeah, so there, there's a lot more um, sort of setup with the tools that they use. Um, and that's actually a paper that I forgot to include, uh, but it's, it's, it's a really, really good uh, read because it goes through some of a lot of the the process of um, decoding each of the the CAN messages, and it actually has some IDs already on there that you can look at um, if you have the same brand of car. Each each manufacturer um, has their own specific set of IDs that they use to describe different things in the car. So Ford uses one type of, of ID um, or ID, let's say uh, it's called a DBC file. So it's sort of a, a data dictionary. Um, but in terms of the tools, they're, they're all very, very basic and they're all the same. It's, it's really just a, um, in terms of hardware, it's just a microcontroller with a, a CAN bus on it and a CAN transceiver. And as long as you have that very simple, sort of tool chain, um, you, can, you can start hacking. Cool. Um, also just wanted a, a shameless plug out there. So um, Bug Crowd is running the car, hack, or the car Hacker CTF this year at the Car Hacking Village at DEF CON. Um, the CTF grand prize is actually a 2017 truck. So if you guys, nice. are, if you guys are coming to DEF CON, um, come compete in the CTF and you can have a chance to drive away with a new vehicle. Yeah, with um, the URL for that is what, Car Hacking Village? I think it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, you can Google it, Car Hacking Village CTF or something like that, but. Yeah, let me make uh, sure. Yeah. But yeah, we, we um, I'm also, uh, as a part of that shameless plug, <laughs> I'm really proud of the CTF uh, site that we built with CTFD, the design is awesome. Um, yeah, it's at carhackingvillage.com. That's all the information for the DEF CON um, Car Hacking Village in its entirety. Bug Crowd will have a table there, and we'll be handing out uh, tons of stickers. And um, Alan, are you going to be in Vegas in a couple weeks, or are, are you, were you able to Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it work. 
it, I think it's, it's, <laughs> I've been there last year and it, it's super fun. And um, there's a lot of people that are very, very knowledgeable. So you go to the car hacking village, you just always learn something new. Um, it's really, really valuable. Awesome. Oh, let well, me put the link. Uh, actually, there's a question about the link. Let me grab it. Um, oh, to the car hacking handbook. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, this was um, super helpful. I'm gonna. We'll try to get you back again sometime to do some more chats. Um, people really, really enjoyed this talk. Cool. Thank you very much for having me.